Hey, Rock and Beer viewers. It's, it's Friday. Not, not sure that this will come out on a Friday, but it is Friday. Um, just in this temporal time, it is it is Friday. Um, yeah, I had some uh, I had some <laughs> I had some plans uh, fall through after work today. I was supposed to uh, supposed to go get a beer. Um, and that, uh, that fell through. So, uh, came home and I was, uh, I had a, a, a beer shaped hole in my, uh, in my schedule. So I decided that I'm gonna, I, I rummaged around in the fridge past all of the totally, totally craft beers. Um, and I found, uh, one of the, one of the few, um, interesting beers I've got laying around, and I, I thought that I would, uh, I thought that I would crack it open and have a, a chitty chat, a Friday chit chat. Did it just get darker all of a sudden? It's cloudy. It's cloudy today. I probably, I probably lucked out not going uh, for my for my beer shaped event um, because I probably would have gotten caught in the rain and and soaked. But anyway, that's uh, let's let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this thing. Um, I don't know, it's probably not going to be too much about the beer, and actually, the, one of the reasons I popped the camera on was because I um, I bought this beer and I didn't realize something about it. So this is a this is a beer from uh, the breweries called Oden, which means open in Danish, um, and it's called Holy, Holy Tropical Fruits. Uh, and I bought it because it's a goza, and um, I pretty much buy any goza that, that comes, uh, comes around. It's one of my favorite styles. Um, I have no idea why there aren't more of them. I have no idea why I don't make more of them. But um, it is it is one of my favorite styles, like probably top three. Um, so this is a tropical and tangy goza brewed with mango, passion fruits, lime, and a touch of sea salt, made in collaboration with Holy Fridge. So we'll come back to that. That's here. You can see their logo here on the side. Is it one of the one of the my one of the best one of my favorite beers? I'm not sure it's the best, but one of the favorite beers I ever brewed. I'm, I'm busting out the good the one wild glass with uh, with the old with the old the old country on it. Um, one of the one of the my favorite beers that I ever brewed. Wow, look at the color on that. Was a lime goza. Um, it was my my first and only kind of attempt or it wasn't an attempt it worked um at um kettle souring uh, it was a fully kettle soured beer i i made a beer and i left it in the grain father at a certain temperature with um oh boy this was back this was a while back so this was this was back when you had to get the the belly the pills this was back before like sour pitch and all that so I had to I had to like order like gut pills like lact, um, lactobacillus plantarum pills from the internet, um, and then I used those, and uh, it was great. I love I love goza. It's yeah. I really should make more. Oh, look at the the color of that. I guess it's heavy on the mango, right? Um, yeah, mango and passion fruit. I guess they're both kind of that color. Oh, it smells great. Wow, that's hmm. that's good. It's not very sour. It's very. It's also very flat. Um, interesting. It's only four and a half percent, so it's pretty um, pretty low. When they talk about tanginess, I don't really get uh, mango and passion fruit all all right up in the top, right up right up in your face. Um, Don't get a lot of a lot of tanginess, but that salinity is there, so it kind of makes it like kind of makes it almost savory. It's um like savory passion fruit mango, like maybe some kind of like a like a chutney, like a like an Indian food chutney. It's, it's interesting. It could uh, it could stand to be a little bit more sour, but um, it's good. Anyway. I'm gonna pour all oh, this. That's a lot of chunks. We're not gonna pour any more of that. So the interesting thing that I that I thought about making this video um, on was so this is this is Holy Fridge. This is a collaboration beer. 
So the brewery is open. They're um, in collaboration. So this is a this is a beer store here in Denmark, and it it started here in my um, I was going to say hometown, but I, I wasn't born here, so I don't know whatever your definition of hometown is. In the city that I live in, or that I now live in the outskirts of, I used to live in, in downtown. But um, it was a it was a real small little like um, a little bottle shop. Uh, one of the first, uh, if not the first, in in our city of Ulnse to to open where the beer was refrigerated. That was the whole that was the whole like gimmick. Holy fridge! It was the fridges were were there and refrigerated. And I'm under attack. It's just the wind. Uh, anyway, so they, it was a refrigerated beer, and they've since opened some other places and. But, but anyway, this place is closed. Um, in my city, they, they still exist, I guess, in Copenhagen for, as far as I know. They opened uh, they opened a second shop in Copenhagen, and they had a web shop and everything, and then they, they closed the one here because I guess it wasn't making any money. Um, uh, and also, so yeah, so that, that place closed. And then one of the only other refrigerated bottle shops also closed it was also a bar that disappeared um and um i just i just the yesterday i saw the um the bottle shop that i usually go to that i buy most of my packaged beer like craft beer from um it's called the dinul it's a it's it means your beer in danish it's um it's actually right around the corner from where i used to live in the city so I'm like six years, six years too late. I could have had a bottle shop right around the corner, which could have been a good thing or a bad thing. But um, they they um, they just announced that they're closing their web shop. That it's um, it takes too much time and um, the the margins are too small because transport costs and material costs and all that stuff. It's just not it's not worth it anymore. So that was kind of like what what I was. Is 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 craft beer in trouble? I I've been listening to I've been starting to hear that that phrase like pop up a lot on like podcasts, uh, brewing podcasts that I listen to. Um, and I know that recently there was a there was a little thing with S J Poor, um, a little thing. There's a there's like a chain of people who made some videos, and I I tried to make one and I couldn't really get the thoughts coherently um, together. But now I've had a few beers and I I think I think I can probably incoherently get them together um so i've been thinking about that like recently uh because it's become there's a lot of breweries closing here i know there's a lot of breweries closing in the u.s there's a lot of brew shops closing um i just saw an entire homebrew shop come up for sale on uh one of the forums that i'm on on the on the internet um they're just like yeah we're uh we're selling the entire homebrew shop so it's mostly an online, but there was a brick and mortar too. So it's like, buy yourself into a homebrew shop. And speaking of those forums, I, um, I've i seen people, they're selling everything. Not a single day goes by where somebody doesn't post that they're, that they're selling their entire gear kit. They're like, here's everything. Here's my, here's my all-in-one electric. Here's all my fermenters. Here's all my doodads and whatever. So if you want to get into brewing... Um, here it all is for like nothing because I'm getting rid of it. I've seen everything from, yeah, from people's like set up like mine going up to all the way up to like nano breweries, um, scale that they're just selling them. And that makes me think like, yeah, is our, um, is our hobby is the, the thing that like, because there's there's two there's two there's two parts of it right there's home brewing and then there's there's craft beer and of course they're you know connected um they're they're kind of like it's difficult where one ends and the other begins because i guess that there's more people that like craft beer than home brewing but if you like home brewing you probably really like craft beer too um but you're not necessarily if you like craft beer you're not necessarily home brewing so uh, I don't know where that is. now. Oh yeah, I'm starting to get coherent and second guess myself. We're gonna fix that. 
give you a little more juice. So yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of people are getting out of home brewing. Um, the same thing I hear a lot of people in the U.S. are getting out of it. It seems like a lot of people are getting out of it here. Uh, I recently picked up like four used um, kegs from a guy from that same forum on Facebook for like nothing, like literally nothing. Like I could turn around and sell them and make a huge profit, but I, I, I have them now for God only knows what I'm going to do with all these. I have so many kicks now, but, um, but yeah, people are just trying to get, just trying to get rid of that stuff. And I get it. I mean, if you don't, if you're not going to brew anymore, it takes up a lot of space and, uh, yeah. But yeah, is, is, is home brewing and is craft beer in trouble? It kind of seems like it. Uh, I was um, I was gonna go and meet this this uh, friend of mine at um, at, a, at a bar, and you know we're both big craft beer guys, and uh, we, were, we were talking about before before it fell apart. We we're talking about you know where we where you want to go, and I suggested one place, and I was like, ah, they're too expensive now. They just raised their prices to I mean it's it's crazy expensive. So let's go to this other place. They've still got you know reason, reasonable prices. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the price of craft beer has gone up. Um, this this can this can of four four and a half percent beer, this costs sixty crowns, sixty Danish crowns. That's round about ten U.S. dollars. That's about nine euro. I mean, that's that's expensive. That's prohibitively expensive. Um, Things, things are just raw, raw materials and transport and everything. Um, bottom lines are yeah, thinner and thinner. So yeah, I think, I think, I think I'd absolutely say that that um, craft beer is in trouble. Um, at least around here, I, I, it's, it's becoming more, it's becoming tougher and tougher. Um, brewing, brewing is becoming slightly more attractive to me because I want to brew more because I, I still like to drink beer. But I find myself buying less and less like beers like this because now for the same like for my I I'm I'm one of those people who budgets, you know, things. So like I have a I have a budget for how much a month I want to spend on craft beer. And that's between bars and, and bottle shops, right? And I mean that that budget used to get me like through a month of, you know, I I had, you know, I like beer. Um, that budget will, it, I'll blow it on a six pack at the, of these basically now, um, because things just cost, cost more. I mean, a year ago, a little more than a year ago, a pint of beer at a craft beer bar in my city would cost 65 crowns. Now it's 75, 80, 85, uh, all dependent on which beer it is. So it's, I mean, that's, that's a significant increase. And I'm sure that that's the same everywhere. Uh, it's not just here. So, yeah, I mean, people are budgeting, people are, are trimming the fat. And I mean, alcohol is definitely a fat trimming item. And then, um, what I find interesting is that, that the, um, a lot of the podcasts I listen to, they talk about how there's no young people getting into, um, getting into craft beer and, and young people are drinking less alcohol in general. So less, less into craft beer. They're drinking other kinds of alcohol, um, that are more like health conscious, which debatable, any, any alcohol is not going to be really health conscious, but, um, and, and they're certainly not getting into home brewing because they simply don't have the means or the interest in it. Like, you know, home brewing is an expensive, expensive hobby. And if you're already not super interested in alcohol, then like when I was, when I was getting into home brewing, when I was like at college age, um, I knew a lot of people who brewed beer because it was super cheap. Um, and you could, you brewed a bunch of beer with the, with the bros and, you know, you all kicked in like five bucks. And then at the end you'd have, you know, it's a lot of beer. Um, and that's, I, I got into home brewing through, you know, like buddies and stuff that were home brewing. And, um, and because another reason I got into home brewing because I moved here and there wasn't any craft beer. So I had to make my own craft beer if I wanted to drink IPAs and stuff because it didn't exist here. But now there's just, there's so much of this stuff, like just 
in the supermarkets and stuff, there's crafty IPAs and all that. So, I mean, you, you can just get the stuff. So on the homebrewing front, at least, there's there's not that motivation to be like, oh, I can't get the beer that I want to drink, so I'll have to make it myself. It just doesn't exist anymore. So I don't know. I'm going to, I'm not going to, I feel like I've hit all of my, the like normal points that I, and I'm basically just agreeing with what everybody else says. I think that, I think that just the, the world, the world has changed a whole bunch in the last few years. And it has not been in a, in a way that's conducive to continuing, um, to have something like beer, which is which is obviously a luxury. I I love beer as more of a cultural thing. I I find a lot of I uh, I have a lot of my social, um, both online and and with friends and stuff tied to beer. So um, I don't like I'm never gonna get out of it because it's it's like it's my main hobby. It's uh, and it's um, it's where I've met a lot of really great people. So I'm not going to get out of it. But if I, if you don't have that kind of connection to it, I can also understand it. If I didn't have that kind of connection, like socially, and my my brother brews, he and I talk about beer a lot. Um, so that's that's a cool like that's a that's a touch point for us. That's a like a touchstone, something for us to bond over. I don't want to give that up. Um, but if I didn't have all that um, stuff, I I would easy, I could easily see myself giving up on because I mean. It's, Brewing costs a shit ton of money, um, and then you know you're left with, uh, you know, tw- twenty twenty plus liters of you know six six gallons of poison. It's uh, then you're gonna debate, uh, and, and then we get into the health debate and all that. But you know, you know what I mean. It's like yeah, it's it's easy to cut beer out of your life. It's um, and I think that that's um cutting beer out of your life i think how easy it is i think that's the that's the main thing that's uh, that's what's uh, that's what's making it easy for or what what is accelerating quickly the i don't want to i don't want to say it's a downfall of of craft beer and home brewing but maybe a plateauing or a, like a slow grade down and then maybe it'll maybe it'll have a renaissance again and jump jump up but um yeah i i I definitely don't think we're going to be seeing that for for a while. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any of the same thoughts. And uh, this isn't usually what I this isn't usually what I do. Um, this kind of like long form, uh, rambling type uh, type thing. I usually just tell you that the beer is okay, and then I turn the camera off. But but I, it just it just got me thinking, and and just a whole bunch of stuff in the last few days have got me thinking a lot about this. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that, what about all of this. And like, you know, I'll leave you, I'll leave you with this. I was actually just listening to the Brewlosophy podcast and, um, they, um, they, somebody asked a question to them and I thought it was really poignant. If you couldn't drink alcohol anymore, if you couldn't drink beer or if you, for health reasons, were told to, to stop, um, drinking would you still brew? Um, and and immediately it was like, well, no, uh, no. I, what would be the point, right? Because the this the, the you know this is the this is the point, isn't it? I mean, I I love the process and I love the science of it and the and the art of design, but if I just made it and then I couldn't couldn't enjoy it i wouldn't i don't think i would do it anymore i wouldn't so what do you guys think let me know